Welcome to the Open Office Hours. Uh, today is May 27th, and we're going to be talking about how you can schedule out your summer. We're going to be giving you a great demo of our tools. And I'm, of course, I'm joined by Richard. Richard, thank you for Ooh, being here. Hello. Thank you for well, thank you for for enjoying me for another another open office open office hours. Ah, uh, yes, it is the summer. I can't believe I was just saying to somebody yesterday. I, I was saying I can't believe it's nearly June. That's it's six months is gone. But just because it's the summer doesn't mean that you should be slowing down on your content at all. And this is one of the things we're going to talk about. Actually, we're going, we're going to talk about a number of things. And you can see we have a very summary vibe on our slides today. Um, we're going to talk to you about some of the software tools that we have that maybe you don't, maybe you haven't heard of, uh, maybe you haven't used, but I think after today, you're going to be using them a lot. Um, I want to talk to you about scheduling out your summer because, you know, while other coaches go off and they lie on the beach um, and drink margaritas, et cetera, et cetera, you can be top of mind during the summer and still do that by using some interesting tools that we're going to show you free and uh, paid tools as well. We have to talk about the future of our open office hours, Ronnie. That's, that's going to be our serious, you know, this is where I will put on my... Um, uh, my serious voice and we'll talk about that so we'll talk about that at the near the end and we'll answer I think we'll answer a couple of questions uh, if we have a chance okay so um, if you are a monthly or annual member you do have a number of web-based tools and you actually have a number of uh, WordPress tools as well that come free with your membership and these are tools that sometimes people don't actually know about or they're just a little bit afraid to use and actually i was talking to a client today and she said i, I know you have those tools but i don't know um i don't know anything about them so i said come on over come on over to the uh uh to the open office and we're going to show you exactly how you use these tools so let me run through the tools quickly just uh, 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 explain and then i want to give you a demo of them um the first one is the PDF Brander tool. This is one of my favorite tools. Why? Because it allows you, well, the name actually gives it away. It allows you to brand PDFs um, and it allows you to do it really, really quickly. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna run you through that. And then we have the Image Brander. Um, you can take our wallpapers and you can put your a web address. You could put a logo on the actual wallpapers really, really quickly. And then, my favorite. I, I think this is my favorite. This is one I, I will show people when I talk about the tools, which is the product showcase. Something that you have seen on our site. If you go to the description page, you see an actual overview of what the product looks like. Um, amazing, especially when you're selling digital products, because people say, well, what's inside the ebook or what's inside the slide deck? And now you can show it to them very, very easily and very quickly. Oopa daisy. We're running ahead of ourselves there, running. Um, so let me just share my screen here. And I think what I will do is um, I'm going to share all my desktop. So if any funny text messages come up or anything, I do apologize, but there shouldn't be any. Maybe I should send you a funny text message right now. No, I'm just maybe you should. Just maybe you should. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please, by, by all means. Okay, so um, here we are plr.me, we have a little drop down menu here called tools. And the first ones that we will look at are uh, the content marketing tools. We have an, um, uh, I'll briefly run through them, an auto slide deck for creating um, PowerPoint presentations very quickly. We have some coaching email templates, which are great little um, fill in the blanks. And it shows you uh, or it produces a template that you can use, an email template that you can use. Content summarizer summarizes the content that you put into it. So you take an article or two articles and it will summarize the content. And then we have the image rounder. So let's go for the image rounder first. Actually, I should have opened that in the new window. Uh, okay, it looks like it has logged me out. You can tell yeah. that this is yeah. live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, is because, uh, this is because I said, I'm gonna prepare really well for Ronnie and I'm gonna make sure that everything is logged in before I actually <laughs> do it. And I did that an hour ago. <laughs> And then I was logged out. Okay, so now I can go here. Image Rounder. I open that up in a new window. So very simply, this allows me to take an image and brand it with a piece of text here. 
Okay, so I can just have discover more. I'll just use the standard discover more features at yourcompany.com. Now, if I go down to my uh, my desktop here, I actually have some images that I've just downloaded. So the first thing I say to you, and this goes as well with the PDF brander, is just take a look at the image to see where you could place that piece of text, where it would work best. So that looks okay down at the bottom maybe. And this one, I think if I was to brand it, it would be the bottom right-hand corner would work best. So that's the first thing to do, check the images because maybe we have the text or the or a graphic on the bottom. And then when you go and brand it, it doesn't look, it doesn't look good. So I can do this. I can change my font if I want. These are all Google fonts because we are big fans of Google fonts. I'll use something awful like permanent marker here. I can change the font color. I can put the position, which is bottom right. Yeah, that's correct. Um, I can put in the font size if I want to make this 25. And then I can change things like background, uh, opacity, text opacity, etc. Now. Here's the interesting thing that I can do. I can take one image or I can take two images and I can drag them up to the page here. Or more than two. I mean, there's there's no limit. So you can actually you could actually take a hundred images if you'd like. <laughs> as, as soon as I said two images, I knew, I knew. I said, okay, I should have said more. I should have said unlimited. Uh, the <laughs> one thing I would do is I would, uh, as I said, especially if you're doing multiple and if you're doing a hundred images, I would check to make sure that the positioning is correct for all of the images, because otherwise what happens is you might get 98 that are perfect or, or two that are perfect and 98 that aren't. And if I go here, you can see that the font is too big. OK, but I, I would have done a test if I was doing this for real. I would have done a test. Um, and this is a quote by Edward de Bono, not de Bono of the U2 from the Ireland. Uh, this is, I was practicing that one for ages. <laughs> okay. De Bono from the de Bono. Island. Got it. Well, that's what we say. We say De Bono. You're going down to shops. Okay. So, wow. I've learned yes. something new. Well, there you go. So, this one looks perfect uh, because the image is a little bit bigger and there's nothing along this left hand side first. So, the thing is that once you check the images and you find 15 images that you like, you can just do them straight away. Ideal for, well, do you know what you could do with those images? You could schedule them on uh, Facebook, maybe. And we're going to show you how to do that as well. Okay. So that's, that's that tool, which is pretty nice. And then we have the PDF Brander. And the PDF Brander does the same type of thing. So let me just close that off and close that off. And it allows me to select a header or a footer or a watermark. Now, very important that you can only do one at a time. So if you want to put a header on all of the PDFs or a footer on all the PDFs, um, you would have to do the header first, then re-upload the branded PDF and do the footer. Um, why would you do that? Well, a lot of people come to us and they say, your content is perfect. I'm doing an offline seminar. Uh, I'm meeting a company. I just want to brand all of these 10 documents really easy or 100 documents or more. And what you can do is you can actually just uh, brand them without changing them. And it's not just our PDFs, it's any PDFs that you have. But one that I like especially is the watermark. What the watermark will do is, well, it will put a very faint piece of text at the back of the image. So it could be like a sample. OK, so if you want to give somebody a sample of the first page, uh, the first chapter of an ebook, you could do that, that you could just upload the first five pages uh in in a pdf and just have the word sample over it or your website address is a really good one because if somebody shares your paid pdf book they're not going to be able to get rid of that watermark because it's at the back now so let's see how this is done um i go in and i have a look at my pdfs and here's some i made earlier um here's one that's uh, uh just our standard articles then we have a motivational quotes booklet and then we have rev up for summer, another article. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly brand all three of these. Now, uh, what I want to see, and this is where you want to just check. If I were to put the branding in the bottom middle, it may overwrite. I don't think it will, but it may overwrite the number one there. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to uh, center, center, center. I'm going to right bottom. I'm going to put it. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave my website address here. This becomes a clickable link. And I'm going to select all three of these. And what it will actually do is it will create them here that I can individually download them. Or I can download them all as a zip file. And that just makes everything so much easier. So let's just have a look at this rev up for summer. Discover more free tools. And it's a clickable link. Then I have the motivational quotes. And again, it's a clickable link here. OK, now, one thing that you may have noticed, and you might say, I don't really like it, Richard, is on the first page, you might not have uh, the actual footer there. So you can actually go in here and there is, let me see. Uh, yeah, pages. pages. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was going, my gosh, <laughs> was this another tool I was using? <laughs> I thought that I could do this, but not with ours. Uh, so what I could do here is I could say on all pages, on the first, on the last, on the even, or all except the first page. So that looks nice. When you upload an ebook, you might want the header, uh, or you might want the, the link on the first page, the cover page. So all except the first page. Um, again, all of the options there with uh, file si uh, font sizes, different fonts. I think once you play around with this, then take a note and say, okay, I like, I like this particular font at this particular size with this particular color. Now, let me go on to the next one, the product showcase. This is the one I really like. And this is the one that we use internally as well for creating our images. So what do I do? Well, uh, rather than explain it, let me show you. Let me take our motivational quotes. I want to sell this. I simply click and drag this over to here. And then I have a number of options here. Let me just, well, let me just show you this first and then I'll show, show you what the options are. Now, what this does is it goes off and in the background, we have the programmers crazily, they're actually creating the images. Our graphic artists are creating the images here. And uh, that's usually a little bit quicker. Uh, you can, don't you love live webinars? Because <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, so there's, uh, maybe it's just my internet speed here. So let me just try that. Now, you must make sure that it's a PDF that you're actually uh, using, because if you were to take the Word file or the doc, uh, uh, doc file, it wouldn't actually work. OK, now maybe there's just something wrong with that PDF. OK, maybe it just doesn't like that PDF. So let me let me show you this one. And generate. Uh, OK, there we go. So there's the, there's the generation. Maybe it's just the size of the PDF it didn't like, uh, but I'll try it again. So this shows me a preview of what I'm actually going to get. Okay, so I take it, I drag it and that. Now, a couple of the options that you can do is the background here is white, which is fine if your product page is a white page, but I like to cho choose transparent because what that will do is it will create what we call a transparent PNG. And that means that I can take that uh, graphic and put it on any background of website that I actually have. Um, just, to, uh, just to say, Richard, I think that PDF, I think I know that one well, there's a lot of images in it. So it might just be you're on Zoom and to upload it might take a little bit of time. Okay. Um, the file size might be a little bit big on that. That, that might okay, be why. So, okay, so let me let me leave that there while I, while I go back and uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Now, we, we do have a number of WordPress plugins and the name gives it away. They are WordPress plugins because I often get people saying, oh, can I use them on Wix? Can I use them on Foursquare? Can I use them on other ones? No, uh, the, the key to this is in the name, WordPress plugins. So they only work on WordPress and they only work on either your um, install of WordPress if you own your own website or if you have a paid wordpress.com um, account where you can actually have uh, the ability to install plugins. I think on the free wordpress.com that some people may have, it doesn't allow you to install plugins. So here is a little um, a WordPress site that we have. And I'm going to show you the three plugins. The first one is the content auto loader. Now, what does that do? Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, I have it here. 
What it allows me to do is to upload a zip file with Word or text documents. And then I can say, I want, let's say I upload a zip file with 15 Word documents. I, and these would be uh, probably best to use our articles. But I upload 15 articles in a zip file. And then what I can say is, I can say, I want this to be, um, uh, I want uh, these articles to be published every Monday over the next 15 days. Okay, so here's one that I have done already. I have two documents here. I just did two uh, for, for speed's sake. I have my zip file here. I can just upload that there, I, I, as in put it up here and then click on the upload button. And what this will do then is it will say, select an article import, I uh, select the article import options. So I can say that I want to post an article every Monday and every Friday. Okay, now I've only two articles. Um, interval to post um, a, a, at in hours. If I had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I would say I want it every 24 hours. Okay, or I could say every uh, six hours and then it would post one article every six hours. I can choose the author of the article and this would be set up on my, on my WordPress install. I can say the category, okay, of the article. So if I have these articles might be all about motivation and I say I want them to categorize as motivation. Um, I can set these up as scheduled or draft. What does that mean? If the setting is scheduled, that means that they go into the system and they're scheduled and ready to be posted next Monday and next Friday. Or if I wanted to make some edits to them uh, because I wanted to add in a picture or something, I could set them all to draft. But this is so much quicker than having to write all of the actual, uh, uh, or copy and paste all of the articles up. And then I can set these to either posts or pages. Okay, so I can actually say, well, I want them all to be pages. Uh, the other thing that I can actually do is I can decide on the date that I want these posted. And we do have a little sort of uh, time machine function that I could actually say, well, I want these started to be posted from the 1st of March. Okay, so that these will get time stamped as being posted on the 1st of March. And then I see the article here and I can change the title of the article if I wanted. Okay, so if I want to change the title of the article, each individual article I can actually uh, change. And then I just go to process articles. I'm gonna take a drink of water and I'm going to say, Ronnie, any questions? Yeah, it was just a, a great question from Erica. Um, she says, I use the open source LibreOffice, um, which gives an ODT file instead of docx. Mm. So can this be used for the content autoloader? So you need to only use a docx or a text file. So you can check if the open office uh, software can export to docx format. If not, I am sure that it will export to text, txt. Um, text files will not have any formatting. You, it'll just be literally, it's just text. There's no bolding, no lists, no you know, uh, mm -hmm. headers or anything like that. Um, docx files are the best because it does keep the bolding and all the italics and the formatting that you have. Um, so you can check the open office software that you use. Also, you could go into Google Docs, uh, which is free, and uh, you can export from there to DocX format as well. So you don't have to use Microsoft Word. To be honest, I don't use Microsoft Word. Uh, internally, we use Google Docs. And again, you could save it as a DocX file. Mm. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, let's have a look. I want to post an article here. And there's two problems that I have sometimes when I want to post an article. The first one is the hook. I want to get something that hooks the readers in. And I might say, I want to change the title of the article that I want to post. So we actually have a solution for you. We have this swipe and deploy uh, plugin. And what that does is it adds a new little section up on your WordPress uh, page, and it allows you to just find titles that are proven to be good hooks. So beware of and how to spot them. So common problem keywords. So be care, beware of toxic employees and how to spot them. You just put your keyword in there. Now, one very important thing that I need to tell you is if you are using the latest version of WordPress, which you should be, there is a plugin that you must install. And that is the classic editor from WordPress. 
Um, it, WordPress has made the editor really, really nice in uh, the latest version and the, the last couple of versions that it released, but it caused a lot of problems for many, many plugins. So all you need to do is uh, ask your, your webmaster or ask whoever looks after your website to install a classic editor, and then you will have no problems. So that's, that's a really important thing, because otherwise you will be hours trying to figure out why uh, it doesn't work. So uh, crucial tactics for keywords, four crucial tactics for um, looking better during the summer. OK, so I could actually just copy that title to clipboard, and I put it in there. OK, so four crucial tactics for uh, summer. Now, that leads us nicely into our last WordPress plugin, which is the Jupe Examiner. So what does that do? Well, that allows me to take my article and I can copy my article in here. And what I can actually put in is I can go down to plr.me Jupe Examiner. And I can put this in here. And then as I type my article, OK, so let me just uh, copy it in here as well. I could have used the thing there. Uh, I'm going to put nine ways to improve your appearance this summer. Okay, I'm just going to make two changes there. Now, what I can actually do is I can go down here and I can check where do we have. I need to, I need to save this, I believe. And then this will tell me how similar or how different my article is to the original article. So one might call it a plagiarism checker, one might call it a like copy skate that it actually checks it. So if you wanted, and it's a question that has always come up on our calls, Ronnie, um, what about SEO? What about the difference between my article and somebody else's? This plugin, if you're using WordPress, will be a lifesaver for you. You can make all of your changes here, and like you saw last week, um, or if you were on our call last week where uh, I had rewritten one of our articles, I could just do this, and then I can see it's 97% similar. Uh, I had made an article which I think was 0% similar because I rewrote it completely. So that's a really good tool as well. Over to you, Ronnie, while I take a... Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, obviously, you know your niche, right? You know who you're serving. And the more that you make the content aligned with their needs, the better it's going to um, uh, it, the better it's going to resound with them, right? They're going to say, "Oh, Richard really gets me, right? Oh, I'm looking for an English teacher. Well, I like Richard's articles. I re like Richard's videos." Now, Richard doesn't have to write all the content from scratch, right? He's taking the PLR.me materials and you're rewriting it, making it work for your audience. So it doesn't take much to rewrite the text. Uh, especially when you understand who you're serving and then adding in stories, examples, case studies, the type of uh, slang, language, the type of way that you like to speak um, or your industry, right? Your industry will have different um, sort of uh, language or even how you talk to uh, a teenager versus how you talk to a retiree. They're going to be different. So um, that's the dupe examiner. And that's very helpful to rewrite it. And it gives you that indicator of, oh, maybe I should rewrite it a little bit more. Or maybe you can add text or remove text, um, just kind of making it feel different. Um, so Brian said, thanks, Ronnie and Richard, for simply going through how to use your products. Very happy to hear. Um, and um, what was the other? I think there's no other questions. Any other questions, please do uh, feel free to put it into the Q&A. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, Richard. Sorry about that. I just had to go off screen because I took a drink of water and I went the wrong way. Oh no! <laughs> and I had to drop the. Uh, I put myself on mute. I was like choking, and you were uh, talking away. Oh. So yeah, uh, in, in one of the open office hours, I broke my office chair. Uh, today I nearly choked. So it's like that's why we have to talk about the future of open office hours. Yes. Okay. Um, now what we want to talk about is scheduling your summer because. The tendency is things slow down during the summer. And if you've ever lived in Spain or been in Spain, August is a month where everybody is having a siesta. It's off to say, but everything is closed. Doctors, everything is closed. But that doesn't mean that you have to stop during the summer because while people are slowing down on their content, you should be publishing more and more. But, you know, I... I like the sort of, you know, work smarter rather than work harder type of uh, 
environment. You, 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 you know that the, that the hustle is real, Ronnie, and, and the grind is real. <laughs> we were joking about this during the week. Um, so what you can do is you can schedule your summer. And I know Ronnie, Ronnie took out that picture. I think it, I need to get a haircut because I think that kind of looks a bit like me now at the moment. <laughs> My hair's, getting, my hair's getting too long, but I like that. So I thought it was an ideal image to put in for 10 ways to improve your appearance this summer. Take one of our articles and decide what you want to do with it. Um, this could become uh, 10 tips over 10 days of how to improve your uh, appearance this summer. Now, then what you need to do is you need to decide what, where to post the content. Um, Facebook are, have a very good built-in scheduler that you can use. Um, but then you need to use for other, uh, for other platforms, you may need to use uh, an actual third-party tool, which, which I'll show you one that I use. Um, and, and we'll talk about these schedulers and whether they're good or bad. And then you can use this, the Facebook Creator Studio, um, or you can use a third-party tool. And I'm gonna go to run through this and you're gonna see some real stats. <laughs> uh as well from my from my facebook um i i don't know whether i should, should show them but or you can use a third party tool this is the one that i use a lot which is uh called promo republic and this was on a special and i bought it uh, on one of these lifetime deals uh, very very nice i think it's quite pricey because most of these um tools can be a little bit pricey so let me just go in here and zip. Let me just go in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my screen here and the Creator Studio. Okay. Now this is Facebook's um, own tool and you can get that at business.facebook.com Creator Studio. So hold on, Richard, I don't, we, don't, we don't see it yet. We still see your uh, slides. Uh, okay, so let me just, uh, let me stop that share. Up here, now you should see it. Yes, here we go. Okay, so um, this is the free tool from Facebook, uh, business.facebook.com forward slash creator studio. Um, I haven't set it up, but you can also, which is really good because uh, I didn't know this, you can also schedule to Instagram. If you are, uh, if you are an Insta person, you can actually do that. Um, so you can set it up and then you can have all your pictures and all your stories scheduled for uh, a particular time. Now down here, um, I'll, I'll show you my recent posts and, and how wide my spread is at the moment. Hey, no, I mean, hey, you got zero engagement, which is, I was gonna say better than nothing. No, I'm just teasing you. No, I know. Uh <laughs> I, I, I was thinking, I said, look, am I going to, am I going to pretend and say, look, I'm getting all these engagements? Okay. I, I, I tell you, one of the things that I've done is um, I have automated a lot of posts and this is, and I didn't use Facebook uh, to do this. So there is a question that, that, you know, does come up. Is it better to use Facebook's tool or is it better to use a third party tool? Because a lot of people say a third party tool Facebook knows that you're only posting automatically and it knows that you're not really engaging with your audience. So it might not spread it as much. Um, so these are posts that I have and I, I have stuff posted, I think are scheduled for the next two or three years uh, with one of the tools that I'm gonna show you. So again, I don't use Facebook that much. I'm moving more over to LinkedIn. So again, that could be the cause, but I'm not going to lie to you and say I have thousands and thousands of people engaging. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, I know. And also, you week. know, your audience, right? Your audience um, with your English uh, coaching tutoring business, it's not on Facebook. You're, you're focusing no. on LinkedIn. So the, the, the engagement here is it doesn't matter. Um, the point, though, is personally, I recommend using the Facebook Creator Studio for scheduling all your posts. I think that Facebook wants you to use their own platform, um, just like how you know, you would go to YouTube, you would schedule a video in YouTube. You don't use mm. a third-party tool to schedule it. it. It's just, it looks better to them, I think. Um, I don't have any inside information, but I just, that's what I would recommend. And same with Instagram, yeah. like it, use their tool. The, Facebook created this tool for a reason. Um, and you can still schedule your posts in advance. You can also see your data, which is really good. Um, as you start posting more or regularly, 
<laughs> or or you see no data. I mean, you're you're like you said, you're you're more on LinkedIn, so that's okay. But um, and by the way, I don't think LinkedIn has any default scheduling capabilities at this time. So no, not business. perhaps sometime in the future they'll have that. But what's what I recommend here is you want to keep an eye on your posts. You want to see what resounds with your audience. Uh, are they do they like certain types of content? Do they like certain types of images? Do they like certain types of videos? Um, I've seen this with some clients that I've been consulting with that they post a happy Mother's Day, you know, little like graphic and they'll get like, you know, 10 likes, but then they'll say, hey, there's this awesome person that's on our team. Let's give her a big round of applause and they'll get like, you know, like 200 likes and, um, mm -hmm. and they'll get much like they'll get 40 comments. So keep an eye on what actually is working for you and for your audience. My biggest tip would be more content about like more personal content stories, be vulnerable, um, real pictures like of, of people as opposed to using stock photo, like stock graphics or illustrations tend to work better. Um, and see what topics resound. I had a client, he spoke about, he's a Christian speaker and um, uh, author. And every time he wrote about parenting, the number of likes, comments, shares went through the roof. And that actually was a huge realization to him. He never really created any content or, or products around parenting, but he's a parent himself. He's, he has a big family and people wanted to know more about that. And by paying attention to your analytics or what Facebook calls insights, you can keep a pulse on what people actually want. And you'll see, oh, wow, that's people are interested in parenting. Oh, maybe I should create some products about parenting. And that's exactly what he did. And he's done very, very well with that. So don't just post for the sake of posting. Look at your data and see what sticks, see what actually works really well. Um, super powerful. I can't stress that enough. Pay attention, keep a pulse on your tribe and see what they're actually commenting on, liking, sharing, and so on. So if I want to, to create a new post, what I can do is I can go to create post. Uh, I could add to story. I could upload a video. Uh, I could I could go live. I could do multiple posts, etc. But let's just go for a standard post here. I just uh, click here and I can say, OK, I want to put this in my Udemy instructor coach motivator. I go into create post. And then what I can do is I can just type in my post. Hey, just uh, on a webinar, whatever it may be. Okay. I can put in a video exactly like what you have just on a normal Facebook uh, post. And then I can say schedule or backdate or save as draft. So I can schedule this and I can say here, I want this to go live on Tuesday the 1st. And then I, I put in a time there. Um, this stop new uh, stop news feed distribution, okay, and it says when you want it to stop on the news feed, okay. So um, I'm so guessing, for example, if you're yeah. running a sale, if you want to have the promotion exactly. stopped, uh, this is not an ad, right? This is not about you're not paying for this, but you, perhaps there's something that's time sensitive. Maybe you are doing a webinar and you're promoting a webinar. Well, you don't want that to Facebook to still use their algorithm to push that out to more people after a certain date. Yeah, perfect. And then you just you just do that. You just put in schedule and you decide on the schedule. So what you could do is you could schedule three or four uh, articles a month, a week, whatever your posting schedule is. And then you know that you are going to be posting that content on a consistent basis over the summer. I would say, you know, it might be good to take the first Saturday of every month, just to schedule some content, because otherwise you will forget to do it. And when you schedule it from here, it should appear to your viewers that it's actually coming from Facebook, that it's not something from, if I go over Buffer here. or Hootsuite or, or Promo Republic, like it will actually say that it's coming from, like you posted it using Facebook. So if I uh, if I have a look here, this is the the tool that I use, Promo Republic. Now I, I went probably about a year ago. I went crazy on this, and I think I have things scheduled until twenty twenty seven. 
because I've just no. automatic. Yes. Oh my god. And then no, and then sometimes I get people and they send me a message and say, Hey Richard, I really liked what you posted today on LinkedIn. And I've gone, okay, well, I don't know what it was because I scheduled it so far behind. So so you can see there that again, that's why Facebook, particularly we just talked about Facebook, doesn't like these posting tools or may not like them because it knows that you can schedule in advance. But what I like about this tool here is I can go in, I can create a post. Um, I've set up my groups here of where I want to post to. And then I can type in a message and whatever it may be. I can type in whatever message I want. I'll just type in something there. And then I can say, schedule this. And then there is this repeat post option. This is what I've used, that every 90 days, the same post is repeated. Um, and I thought 90 days because, well, people won't, will probably forget. So I can put in every 90 days and then I can say when it actually stops. So I can say, well, I want that to stop in whenever it may be, 20, 2027, 2027, <laughs> whatever it may be. And that will be posted every single 90 days. And I always wonder, because I think like, I don't know how far ahead I've got things posted that I could be in my 70s back and it'll still be posting <laughs> stuff. So this is truly set and forget. And I here. want to point out something here. So Promo Republic, it will also post to, uh, I guess that's the G is Google, there's Twitter, there's LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Pinterest. So there's lots of places where it will automatically mm. post to. So it's a very useful tool, again, for those other platforms. I mean, LinkedIn, uh, it's really not as sophisticated as Facebook is when it comes to Instagram, Facebook, and their, their algorithms and the scheduling. Mm. Um, so so link, this would be a great tool to use if your audience is primarily on LinkedIn or Pinterest. Um, so it's mm. a great way of using the tools. Now, a couple of comments and questions that I want to share. Um, so Regina is asking, when you're using the Creator Studio, can you schedule multiple posts at the same time? Um, yes, it would be one at a time, though. You, I don't think you can actually just bulk, you know, upload 30 different posts and click schedule. Like, I don't think it's like that, but it, it is one at a time. But you can absolutely schedule for many, many days, weeks, months, years ahead. Um, so Michelle had a question. Most of my content is on my personal Facebook page. Does that mean I have to create and use my business page more? Um, not necessarily, um, you know, there is a little bit of debate. Now, I'm not a Facebook expert, so that's an asterisk there, but there is a little bit of debate that um, personal pages will get more distribution than business pages because, of course, Facebook is in the business of getting paid and they want businesses to pay, right? They want businesses to advertise. So if you're going to use your personal page, if that's where your following already is, and if you're okay with the type of content that you're posting on your personal page that would apply to your personal profile and your business clients, then you can continue to, to use your personal page. Um, we don't do that. We do have a business page. Honestly, you, if you ever look me up on Facebook, I don't really post that much on there. Like that's not really um, a medium for me. Uh, we do advertise on there, which is different. But um, so it's up to you. Like if you're active already, I would probably just stick to the personal page. Um, we had a great comment here from Savita. I was um, just about to say you skipped over that one. I, was going, oh, uh, I would not skip, skip over this. <laughs> I, I wanted to save this for last. So Savita mm -hmm. said, this is perfect. I just got an idea. I, I'm doing a one minute money tips and now I can schedule them to post automatically. Richard Butler is the man. There you go. I know you wanted me to say that last part. I wasn't going to skip out on you there. Uh, yeah, so because I saw yeah, that next day. I love that. I love that idea. One minute money tips. If that's a video, that's cool. I mean, I really like that idea. And I, here's what I love. This is this is I'm all about batch mode, right? So when I'm working on something like videos, when I'm working on social posts, um, anything, I like to work in big batches. Now, for for something like the one minute money tips, if it actually is a video, which I it one minute, I kind of feel like it's a video. And if it's not a video, hey, I would make it a video. But mm. spend an afternoon and record, you know, four, eight, 12, how, however many you can do. They're one minute, right? And if you use something like a teleprompter, it will be, it'll go really quickly. Um, and, and if not, if you're just good at the top of your, your head, go for it. Record as many as you can. Then you can send it over to a video editor or you can edit, edit it yourself. Um, chop it up. And boom, you can now uh, share that and schedule that on Facebook, on Instagram. You can use a tool like Promo Republic to schedule that on LinkedIn. 
uh, and so on. So it's just such a great, great idea to to batch your work. Just wanted to point that out. Yeah, I, I, you know, and I would suggest that you, you know, spend uh, spend a little bit of time maybe at the beginning of the month just to actually do that. Uh, to, to batch things uh, like that. And I think it, it works really well because then you can forget, a, forget about it. I mean, you know, I've been playing around Promo Public for a couple of years. So I, as I said, I have a lot of stuff that I've posted that I don't even remember. And there's some stuff that I have to delete because uh, certain links aren't working to third-party sites, uh, et cetera. Now, I just want to see, yeah, just let me... Um, so let me share my screen here because I want to show you one thing that's a little bit of a giveaway. And that is that when I show uh, a post here, it says published by social post. Okay. So um, sometimes it will come up or it may show that it's been published by Buffer or by social post, etc. The debate is out there. And I guess Facebook are going to say we would prefer people who are interacting on our platform rather than using an automated system to uh, to actually post. So the posts may actually have a lower uh, ranking and distribution mm -hmm. because of that. Again, you know, we're not experts in uh, Facebook, but that seems to be the general thought that people uh, actually yeah. say. I want to answer a few more questions, Richard, about mm. this. So just because it's in context. So uh, Savita asked, uh, I know someone said, that uh, sorry, I know someone that doesn't schedule their posts. He mentioned something about it not being personal. When you schedule posts, does it indicate where you're posting from, and does it even matter? So, just as Richard showed, it does show where you're posting from if you're using a third-party tool. So, if you're using Facebook in their Creator Studio, it, it's you're good because you're using Facebook's in-house tool. Um, so that's the first thing. So that's personally why I would recommend scheduling posts using their own platform. Um, so Facebook Creator Studio. Now, answering the other part, which is about it not being personal, um, that's why I, I personally, and again, it depends on the business, depends on, on how things work for you, um, but I personally wouldn't schedule too, too far out in advance. Okay, nothing against Richard in 2027. I don't know what I'm going to do in 2027, <laughs> but for me, I, I, pro I would post probably, you know, let's say two to four weeks out in advance mm. maximum, and and. I, I still would kind of be around. I mean, like, and, yeah. I, and I, I have a technology problem. Like I always have my phone on me. So I would see the comments and I would know what's going on and I would reply, right? But, you know, uh, maybe you can delegate that to your team if you're completely unplugging for, for vacations. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't schedule too far in advance. That way you can keep it personal. And also you want to be on top of current events. I mean, what if an upcoming post you have might be insensitive or inaccurate or something that happens, mm. you know, a year from now, right? I mean, imagine you you pre-scheduled posts and, and it was during peak COVID time and everything's locked. I mean, we're still locked down here in Toronto. You know, imagine posting that, that would suck, right? So you want to make sure your posts are relevant to, to the times. Um, so Hewitt says, uh, hey guys, with the new algorithms, don't you need longer than a minute? It's a very good question. Um, so obviously it depends on the platform. If it's Instagram, one minute is, is really the ideal length. You can go longer, but then it kind of switches over to, I think it's IGTV or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, um, it depends on the platform. For YouTube, yes, I would do about 10 minutes. Um, for Facebook, I would do longer than a minute, but there's nothing necessarily against a minute. Um, one minute, is a, is, it can be a very good length. And especially if it's something that's a daily basis. Um, um, yep. One thing I'm, again, I don't know, but I'm sure I heard that they said Facebook prefers that you keep your personal page personal and your business page kind of business so that if you're putting too much businessy stuff on your Facebook page, they, they could do something. The, the one thing I have to be careful of is these big tech companies, I, I had it with Google or with Facebook, that if they, if they block your page, you could lose all of your clients because you did something wrong. And there's no going back. I, I remember 10 years ago, I was blocked for Google AdWords uh, or AdSense. And no matter what I do 10 years later, they still do not let me have my AdSense account back. So once you get on the bad side of them, you are done. Um, what do you think about and, in video? And I wanna, sorry, I just want to say something about that. Um, first of all, that's exactly why you need to build your own platform, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. get people onto your own email list. Get them into yeah. your world. Get them into multiple social platforms. So, you know, maybe it's Facebook and LinkedIn, or maybe it's 
Instagram and Snapchat or TikTok. I mean, you know your audience, right? Your audience is going to be on different places. Um, diversify. That's my first recommendation. But also get them into your own world. Control your platform. I mean, mm -hmm. I can control when I send an email to you so that that way you can actually be more likely to read it. I cannot control whether Facebook decides to show you my post, right? The mm -hmm. only way I can do that is if I pay them, right? If I pay mm -hmm. advertising dollars which isn't necessarily bad, but maybe I don't want to do that for every single thing I want to share with you. So build your own platform. That would be a really, really important piece. Sorry, go ahead, Richard. Uh, yeah, uh, in video and PLR. Um, in video, I believe, is probably one of these little creation tools that will create uh, I don't like know text what videos. I, I think it's is. something like that, but you could use that with, with our PLR content. You could definitely use something like that. Or there was the other one, um, Noble Samurai, I think it was, that you could create videos and they put captions on it. Uh, oh, okay, so, yeah, I just took a look. So in video.io, I'm guessing that's what you mean, Maria. Um, I think that's great. You could absolutely mm -hmm. use the PLR content for that. You can create some beautiful um, visuals for there. I think that would that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Sharon, Sharon had a great question. Mm -hmm. I love this. Should you change up your clothes or always wear the same thing in all of those posts? Uh, so, cause I was mentioning, right. I was mentioning, Hey, I like to do things in bulk. Um, so I like to record videos in bulk. I like to do, uh, cause you know, I, maybe you, you get a fresh haircut, you're, you're in the zone, you prepare in advance, you want to record all in bulk. Um, I do bring multiple different shirts with me like now, and generally I'm recording at home so I can easily swap it out, but I, I tend to change it up because you don't want to feel like you're always wearing the same thing. Um, the only caveat is maybe you do like maybe if your company you have a, a company shirt you know a, a golf shirt or a t-shirt or whatever it is and you have your logo on it sure you can use the same shirt over and over again um that's a style thing but for me i just i always wear i always like to change it up even if i'm recording it all on the same day uh yes i have to, so, I have to look at that because i think on some of our videos i always end up wearing the same t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> I swear I have. I'm like Steve Jobs. I just have 10 of the same t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, you know what? And that's okay too, right? I mean, there's not, nothing. Oh, because that could be your style. Way. That could mm. be your style. It's hard. It's, I can't really say much about that. If, that, if that's your style, go for it. Um, uh, so Frida said, I'm so grateful to find out about PLR.me. You two provide so much value. I plan to be a customer for years. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. That's awesome. Oh, that's excellent. Um, Okay, so Maria said, my husband is an attorney and advised me to have a website because then you can always keep your email list and clients. Yes, yes. exactly. Always build your own platform. I mean, you could, I mean, there were, there was the, um, the good old days with Facebook where everything you posted would just get maximum distribution. And then they're like, man, maybe we should charge you for that. And they started mm. suppressing reach. So that way people would pay for advertising. You know, people would, then like, you know, imagine if you like a page, you expect to always hear from that page. Well, you don't, you, you will not always hear um, and, and see everything that's posted. So yes, control your own platform. I totally agree with you. Yeah, because yeah. You, you never know when, like I, I followed people on, on, on YouTube and they had to change their channel because YouTube said it was extreme sports. They said it's too extreme. They were climbing up abandoned chimneys, which is a fascinating video series to watch. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really scary. Um, but one guy had to, he had to shut down his channel and change it over completely. So always expect that it could happen. So try and filter them off to somewhere else. Uh, and ideally your, your particular website. Um, I might just put back my, my screen share here for a second, Rami. Um, so, so our first step was to find some content. Our second con uh, step was to um, decide where you want to post it. Um, and to use one of the tools in the third step. And then the fourth step is to schedule that content and get it out there um, and get into, you know, try, don't go out and spend money. Use Facebook's tool. If you're, if you're a tribe on Facebook and Instagram, there's no need to spend any money. Um, because as I say, these tools are expensive because I think it's expensive to run them. So I would just use, use free tools. Um, I talked about the content um, auto loader, um, which I think Ronnie brings us to the future of our open office hours. I think it does. It's quite a serious. Yeah. We should have some I, serious so we, music here. We, no, 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 no. <laughs> I uh, uh, so we've been doing this every week 
for over a month, I think. Maybe this is I our fifth. It's, it I'm not be, sure. Yeah, it's not. Um, and the summer is coming up, right? We're talking about scheduling your content. We're talking about taking a break, re, you know, reinventing and reinvigorating and relaxing. So we are going to pause the open office hours, uh, at least for the time being. Now, maybe for a month or so, um, but we'd love to actually hear your feedback. And do you want us to continue doing this? Is every two weeks better or is every month better? Um, or is every week great? Like, let us know what you think. Um, obviously we want to take your feedback and we want to know what you want and what's going to help you with your business. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, I was going to say, uh, you know, since we were talking about scheduling, should we, should we tell everybody that these are actually recorded at Christmas, 2020? <laughs> it's, uh, it's so cold. Outside. No. It's so no, cold. They are <laughs> You're hilarious. I can't wait for Santa. I can't wait for Santa Claus to come to us. So. No, no, actually, I, I recorded my on. part. I recorded my part in Easter of 2017. Actually, <laughs> we're, we're time travelers. No, I um, yeah. So we want to hear what you think. I mean, mm. uh, if do do you like this every week? Do you want this every couple of weeks? What kind of content do you want? What do you want us to do? Demos? Do you want us to go take you through the website, or do you want us to feature case studies with with other clients? Um, we want to know, like, so please let us know. You can let us know in, in the comments here. You can send us an email. Um, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video. Uh, if you're watching the replay, please, we want to hear from you. So um, we take your feedback seriously and we want to rejuvenate ourselves and come back strong and give you the, con the kind of content and training and yeah. lessons that you're looking for. Um, so so, yeah. so that's- Every week, yeah. every two weeks, every two weeks is great. Once a month would be great. Uh, I've been here all the time since Jane. Uh, a mix of all. Awesome. Set time every week. Uh, Rich, uh, uh, Richard is a hoot. I thought it says Richard is hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a hoot. That's okay. I'll take a hoot. Yeah, and, <laughs> every and two we have weeks. a mix. I mean, every couple of weeks, mm. uh, I vote for every week. Uh, yeah, so, you know, please let us know. <laughs> Sabita says, no, I love these. I'm not going to be selfish and tell you to keep doing this forever. Uh, that, well, we're getting lots of comments here. That would be nice. Or I could just stalk Richard on YouTube weekly works for me. Um, yeah. So I have left my Thursdays open at this time uh, for mm. the next two months. Each week is always a gem. Cool. So uh, we really appreciate well, somebody said, Yeah. Repetition is good as well. Because, you know, I, I, I see this with, with clients that I get on calls as well. And they say, no, no, it's just, you know, I need to hear it again as well. Just every week it sparks a new idea for me mm -hmm, that's awesome so so i think it's please continue yeah every two weeks with demos michelle says uh, please yeah uh, uh i learned so much being here continue elaborating on how to use the content uh, and sharing what other people are doing is great so yeah i mean this is super fantastic um oh the uh, abdullah saying uh alternate weeks with training and open forums um cool so we appreciate that. We will kind of distill all your feedback and any future feedback from we, that we get from the replay and the YouTube comments. Um, so thank you. And we really appreciate that. Um, we do have some questions in the Q&A. So let yes. us, let's go through these. Um, uh, so first off, how do you find the replays? Sharon is asking. So there's a couple of ways to do this. The, the first way is to go to plr.me. And at the top, it'll say learn. So maybe Richard, if you, I think you're probably only sharing the slide deck. I'm so yeah. so, so just... plr.me and at the top menu, you'll see where it says learn. If you click on that, you will find a section that says how to use PLR videos. And then you will find our videos section. Um, let's okay, pop so over there. Mark here. So learn, learn how to use PLR content videos. And then you will find, honestly, you'll find a lot more than just the open office hours. You will find lots of videos that Richard and I have recorded. Yes. Um, there's the June. Lots of me. <laughs> there's lots of Richard. June 2021, a content marketing calendar. You'll find that there. And just scroll down until you see where it says webinars. Um, so here we go. So you'll see some of the latest ones there. Also, you can find us on YouTube. If you just go to YouTube, type in plr.me, you will find all of the same videos on there as well. And we, we do email them. So if you're not getting our emails, let us know because we do email out the replays as well. So lots of ways to uh, find the replays. Uh, one, thing, one thing that came to me is we're not on TikTok. And then I was thinking, well, 
what we could do on TikTok is take an article and then I click my fingers and then it changes into something else and click my fingers. But Richard, if you're going to be on TikTok, you need to do the Irish dance jigs there, right? Like you've got to have TikTok. No, we're not on TikTok. Those, TikTok's <laughs> all about doing the dances, isn't it? I'm, I'm sure there's more to TikTok than that. We're not on TikTok. Um, <laughs> so, uh, okay, so Regina, when recording videos, webinars, is it better to be seated or stand showing full body shot? Uh, mm. This is a personal preference. I have recorded videos standing um, before, and I like the way it feels. For me, it kind of just allows me to get a good posture, right? If I'm sitting, it's kind of easy to slouch. It's, it's easy to, um, yeah, just not look so flattering on camera. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily do a full body shot, though. I don't think people need to see your feet. Um, I would really focus on torso up. And um, there is a video that I did talk about recording tips, video recording tips. If you go to plr.me slash videos, you will find that in there. Um, it, it just goes in about how you can be really engaging on video. Uh, I talked about techniques like jump cuts. I talked about how you can kind of get closer to the camera, how you can get further away using the teleprompter. I talked about lots of different ideas. So take a look at that. Um, for webinars, if a webinar is over an hour, I would sit down. You're going to be a whole lot more comfortable, right? But now if it's a, a two or three minute video or a 10 minute video, stand, you know, that's, that's up to you. Um, but I, I wouldn't necessarily do a full body shot. I think it's just too much. And you also want to be able, people, you want people to see your expressions, right? They, your facial expressions, your hand gestures. If the camera's too far back, they're not going to really get a good, good sense of that. Um, and yeah, Sharon says, whatever shows more energy. Uh, Maria is referring to our video about my video about um, video recording tips. Yes, it is a great video of the jump cuts. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. Happy Easter 2017. Sorry, so late, but I was watching an infomercial about pillows with a face after the late show. <laughs> you know, I, I just love joking with, with y'all. It, it's, it's so much fun. Um, okay. And by the way, if you just skipped ahead, like you're watching the replay and you just skipped ahead to happy Easter 2017, and you have no idea what I'm talking about. You need to rewind because we, we joked, just, we just joked about that. Um, Okay, so Regina says, I've had more interaction on my Facebook personal page. Should I use a third party like Buffer uh, using my personal page or can I use Facebook Creator Studio on my personal page? Um, that is a very good question. I don't know if you can use Creator Studio on your personal page, but I think you can schedule posts on your personal page, I believe. I'm not a Facebook guru, so that I'm not sure about, um, but I, I'm not surprised that you have more engagement on your personal page. That's kind of how Facebook works. They, they're they going to distribute more personal content than business content. Um, I, I totally understand why people want to separate business and personal. Um, you just might need to spend a little bit more time with the engagement on the business side, mm. referring people from your personal to your business to kind of engage there. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't use a third party tool like Buffer. I have used stuff like that in the past. I just think try if you can to stick within the platform. Um, so Anka said, we can't schedule posts on personal Facebook page. So there you go. Um, so I like this question here from Savita. This is hilarious. So I do videos explaining what financial terms mean. Instead of saying something boring, like this is what an asset is, um, what would you suggest I use in the video introduction or the, or the copy to make it sexy? Bringing the sexy back to finances if there ever was a thing. So first of all, you asking this question and the way you write, the way you speak, your energy, I think you got this. I think you're going to kick butt with this. Um, I just think mm. you need to have your personality, right? You just need to inject your personality, crack jokes. Um, you know, you can, you can make finance um, education really valuable in terms of education, but you can also bring your personality and bring entertainment too. Uh, you know, there's a category for that, edutainment, right? Education mm. and entertainment combined. Um, here we are, we're talking to fellow business people about content and marketing, and we're joking. We're, we're, we're kind of just mm. being ourselves. Um, you know, Richard's got his personality. I've got my personality. You have your personality. You need to use that person, that personality. So, um, tell stories, be funny if that's who you are. And it, it doesn't, it, it, you can educate while also inspiring and and entertaining. So I don't know if that's helpful, but I, I think the bottom line is 
just inject a whole lot of you, Savita. I think you're hilarious. So just do that. And I, and I think you're, you have to find you because you can't be anybody else. Because if you try and put on being funny, it will come through as non-authentic. And then people will be, uh, you know, people will, will, will shy away from you. And if people don't like my humor, that's fine. They will go and find someone else. If people don't like your humor, the way you explain something, you know, that's it. I, I'm thinking maybe you could you could start off the video with some stuffy voice and, you know, this is what an asset is and, uh, and then just change it up and then say, hey, that's boring. So let's talk about what it is. It's not X, it's not Y. And depends and on your props. audience. Use props. I mean, some mm. people will use a whiteboard. Hey, get some stuffed animals in there. Like, you know, here's, this is this person. Like, be funny. Like, just eliminate any of the barriers in your mind about how a finance video should appear. Maybe, look, there you go. Like, there, I don't even know who that guy is, but I've seen him in how many of our, of our open office hours now? I feel like it's like an Easter egg. Like, spot the weird looking dude in the, in the, in the webinar. But do that, right? Do something that's different. You can actually mm -hmm. mash together different, um, different mediums and modes and make something interesting. Finance being told by a seven-year-old, right? Or finance mm -hmm. as reenacted with stuffed animals. Uh, finance also relating to, like you know, relating to current events. And, you know, maybe, um, maybe there's something funny there. Maybe it's not funny. Maybe it's just like, I, here, let, let me give you a perfect example. Um, so I'm a sports fan. Okay. Now there's, you could, you could like all sorts of sports. There's hockey, there's basketball, baseball, soccer, whatever. There is this doctor. He's a, he's a, I think he's an orthopedic surgeon or anyway, he's a, he's a young man who has a YouTube channel. And what he does is he reviews sports injuries. So it's very time sensitive. It's current events. So there recently there was a, a hockey player that got nailed, like really scary injury with that night. He had a video up and had, I don't even know how many tens of thousands of views, because again, it, it's a very current event type of thing. Mm. YouTube promotes very timely videos and people share that kind of thing. So YouTube says, oh, this is something that should be widely shared mm. with, with mm. the algorithm. And so more and more people will see it. Now he's a young man, he's a doctor. He's talking about sports injuries, right? So that's totally different. He's not talking and he's educating, but it's really interesting. Like he's, just, he's saying, this is what I think happened. This is maybe the recovery time. Like, it's really interesting. He's not trying to be funny. That's not his angle. That's okay. But he's mashing together current events with sports and sports medicine. So anyway, that's just another example. How can you mash together different fields? Um, there is a way and you can be unique and you can put your own style on it. Uh, don't try to be funny if that's not your style. Maybe you're more serious like this doctor, but he's still going to be um, really engaging people with his type of content. Absolutely. Uh, so I think we can wrap up in a few minutes. If you're any yeah, let me just go questions. through. Well, let me just go, go through a couple of questions that, that, oh, sure. that, that we have. So uh, we've talked about this, a third party sketching tool or a, or a native tool, probably a native tool is a little bit better. Uh, because it will show the algorithms that you are engaging on the platform. Uh, Ronnie mentioned this, how far in advance should I schedule? Probably three to four weeks, not seven years or eight years like, like I did when I went a bit crazy. <laughs> um, can I brand both the header and footer at the same time using the PDF brander? No, you must do the header first, save it, then bring it back up and do the footer. We don't have that facility in it to do both at the same time. Um, what content works best if I want to schedule it? Again, I always tell people, go back to your audience. Some will like videos, some will like animations, as somebody mentioned, some will prefer just an image. It depends on your, your audience. It depends on what you want to achieve with the content. If you just want to get engagement, maybe um, a picture is the best thing, an image is the best thing. And then that is all the questions. We do have just a little bit about how credits work. Again, as I always say to people, it's not tokens, it's not coins, it's not biscuits, it's not whatever. We call them credits, please. <laughs> if you get on a call with me, don't ask me how do the tokens work. Uh, it's credits. We're not a casino yet. <laughs> not officially. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and this is just a couple of things that people always ask as well. How much can I get with a credit? Well, audios for seven credits, you can get course bundles for it. 
150 credits and you can get a lot of things just for one or two credits here so there's a lot of choice there go in start building out and using things an example of our 400 credits that we um we uh provide one of our packages you can mix and match but you could get 25 ebooks 50 action guides and 50 worksheets or anything in between you don't buy a package of ebooks you buy the credits and you can spend them any way you wish uh again more examples here i'm not going to go through everything you can get two course bundles you can get one bundle 10 ebooks there's, there's lots of things ronnie went through all of the combinations of some of the things that you can actually uh get here so and lots the, the and best lots of part things. the best part about it again is you think of it sort of as a raw material if you if you mm. imagine if there's an ebook about self-confidence you can relate that to confidence to children you can relate to the confidence with you know um those who are about to retire uh, you can relate that to financial planning you could relate that to sports right there's lots of different ways um the the point though is make it your own add your own personality these are some of the ways that we talked about today and in previous sessions about how to make the content your own um you can inject humor if it's meant to be. You can inject education if it's meant to be, um, or you can mash them all together. Um, so I just want to to mention that. And, and Maria, um, Richard, you have a question for Maria. Can I get twenty PLR biscuits, please? Ah, uh, yes, you can. Actually, <laughs> we we actually have that brand. Uh, they're coming out in Walmart soon. You'll see them. The PLR <laughs> that me biscuits they're called. <laughs> Michelle Please says I'm a yearly serious. subscriber. Totally worth it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, and um, Miss Shan Shani said, thank you so much. As I finish working late, so I only just joined. I have bought the $400 bundle yearly subscription ages ago. Awesome. Um, yes, Robin, there will be a replay, so not to worry. Um, every time he says biscuits, I get hungry. Hello, Actually, I'm hungry, so I'll have to <laughs> well, we're going to wrap up any last minute questions, please let me know. I just want to mention one more thing because I, I thought this is very relevant. Um, so go, coming back to Savita's question about finance and videos, and I mentioned the sports medicine guy who reviews like sports injuries. Um, another YouTube channel that my, my kids and I love to watch. It's, uh, it's a guy named Electro Boom. Okay, that's a YouTube channel name. And he's an electrical engineer. Now, if that sounds boring, guess what? His YouTube channel is so hilarious because as in the name, Electro Boom, every single video, he accidentally or intentionally shocks himself. So you see him like building something and he shocks himself and he falls and you see him like laughing and, you know, he bleeps out the little swear words in there, but he's hilarious. Now in that, he's also educating about electrical engineering. Like, don't do this and do this, don't. And then boom, he just shocks himself. My point in saying this is, would you have ever guessed that a, a I don't know, a guy who's been an electrical engineer for 20, 30 years, who, who knows? Could you imagine that he would have a successful YouTube channel? He has millions of subscribers and it's just fun. It's entertaining, right? So it doesn't have to be entertaining. Um, it could be educational, it could be entertaining, it could be a mash together of multiple things. Um, okay, so... Uh, Actually, my, my, my brother-in-law was telling me about that, that he follows a, a guy who's an electrician, and he said it's just really interesting, like, because he shows how he installs whatever it may be and what could go wrong, etc. And he's not losing anything because I'm not going to install an air conditioner. I, but I'd probably call him if he was in my area because I know I've seen his work. So don't be afraid to share things on, on, on your channels, you know? Exactly. Um, so Savita says, thank you both so much. I really appreciate all that you do. Happy Memo Memorial Day to everyone. Happy Memorial Day for our fellow yes. U.S. friends. Um, yeah, I, I just appreciate you being here. I, I think we can wrap up now. Um, and look forward to more open office hours in the near future. Um, we will rejuvenate, we will recoup, re get time. Re I don't know, get yeah, get a get a summer dan. No, and, and we'll come back and we'll we'll take your feedback and we will um yeah, we'll have some fun, right? We have a lot of fun here at PLR.me. Richard is the director mm -hmm. of humor, I am the apprentice of humor, and together we just, oh, sorry, we just <laughs> yeah 
Yes. One thing about Richard, if you ever speak to him on the phone, he's he's the king of sarcasm. He's very he. It's very Not on the phone. <laughs> poignant. Okay. He he reserves it. I think just for me. Peeler maybe <laughs> just just for Peeler, not me. No, he's he's uh, he's a hoot, and we appreciate your time, Richard. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, please let us know if you have any questions. Reach out to us. Let us know what you'd like to see from us. Yeah, for future absolutely. open office hours as well. Leave a comment below if you're watching this on YouTube and uh, you can leave so a comment much. here on Zoom as well. And a thumbs up. Yes, definitely. I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna start cooking the Christmas dinner now, actually. Um, <laughs> you, if you hide the Easter eggs, Ronnie. I, I'm having the Easter eggs. <laughs> you said it for me. Yeah, you're hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have the Easter ham, lamb, and turkey. We're doing a trio over here. <laughs> I didn't try. <laughs> Take care, everyone. See you.